Okay, we'll record. Um, hang on one sec. Uh, we're still we're still getting some late comers. Um, anyway, I want to welcome you all. Good morning. We're up to thirty nine participants. Um, I'm glad everybody could join us today. Um, I'm glad we're hopefully all surviving the COVID. I haven't heard any negative uh, uh, news on COVID amongst our members. Uh, the last I heard was David Singer, and he's home, I understand, and uh, coming along. I don't know if there are anybody else we can talk about it after the meeting. Um, I just wanted to take a minute and say that uh, um, we're going to survive this race issue. It may not be in our lifetime, but we will survive it. And uh, I'm confident that we're going to solve it one of these days. It, it just may be a long time. Um, it's very distressing. Um, there, there's definitely some institutional racism in this country, but um, we just have to uh, do our best to be nice to people, uh, treat your fellow man well, uh, be friendly. Um, we will solve it. Um, other than that, I wanted to let you all know that there will be an email in the next day or two about a couple programs that are being put on by the National Museum of American Jewish Military History. Um, and I spoke with uh, Lee Asger, made me aware of them, and I spoke to Nelson about them. Um, there's one of the programs, when you get the email, it's the second one listed. Um, it has to do with a South Jersey, Central Jersey connection to the founding of Israel and the uh, procuring of arms in this country. I guess stealing is probably the proper word. Stealing of arms in this country and export to Israel in the 1947 range. Um, Nelson uh, says it's, a, it's an interesting presentation. I think it's by a... Uh, Penn State professor that he's familiar with. So if you see that email coming, um, note on your schedule, I believe it's June 18th around 3 p.m., but you'll see the email. It'll come out in the next day or two. Um, other than that, um, I don't think I have anything. I'm looking at my notes. I wrote myself a couple notes. Um, no, I think that's it. So um, without further ado, um, Dave Schwartz, would you like to introduce our speaker? You can unmute yourself or I can, why don't you unmute yourself? Done. Here David. we go. David? Can you hear me? Yes. I unmuted myself. <laughs> Good job. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome, Paula. Thank you for joining Thank us you. today. Paula is the Mid-Atlantic Director of Stand With Us, a, a very interesting Jewish organization. Welcome, and you're on. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> that was brief. That, that was short and sweet. Short and sweet. Thank, you. Always thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Dave. Thank you to everybody who got up early this morning to be on the Zoom. I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm delighted to join you, but I feel somewhat somewhat sad that we're doing this on Zoom. The last time that I had the privilege of speaking with you, we did it in person, and you know, just to kibitz with you guys all in the same room was just just a great way to, to you know to be with you and spend the time. So I hope that we can still have that same kibitz factor here on 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 Zoom. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a microbiologist by training, which of course explains how I became a pro-Israel advocate but I've spent my entire adult life um, both as a, uh, an avocation and a vocation um, advocating for Israel. I've just been invited to, uh, to be back on APAC's National Council. This will be my 21st year building a strong alliance between the United States and Israel. Um, I had been the executive director of the America Israel Chamber of Commerce. I had worked for the Federation in Princeton, New Jersey. I uh, came back down to South Jersey to be the director of JCRC, which is when I spoke with you last, and left that organization for this incredible opportunity with Stand With Us. And I'm hopeful that when we're done talking today, you'll have an appreciation of the challenges that face our children and our grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, and how we as a community 
are dealing with those challenges and how and what and what you can do. So if you don't mind, I'd like to start off with a video that I think will give you a nice overview of the international organization and then we can drill down from there. So I'm going to share my screen and fingers crossed that that this works. You feel the connection deeply. The history and the people inspire you. You yearn for peace and want others to know the beauty of Israel. You want to inspire them to care as you do and to stand up for what is right. Do you take for granted that they know the whole story? Do they see how far we have come? Where we've been? Where we are going? Are they inspired by Israel? Do they understand never again? Too often, Jews, Israelis, and allies are attacked because of who we are. We support the Antifada! Israel is a terrorist state! Because we want to see Israel live and thrive in peace. Our friends, our families, our communities, our students feel the hostility. Every day requires courage and strength. We are told that we don't belong. That an entire history, nation, and people don't matter. You want to stand tall, to make a difference, to ensure that your peers, your friends, and your families understand the facts, to tell a story of resilience, justice, and hope, to help build a more just and peaceful world. That is what Stand With Us does. That is who Stand With Us is. We represent you when you can't be there with 18 offices around the globe we represent you in our high schools, where we reach 50,000 students each year with the beauty of Israel and foster the next generation of Zionist leaders. We are your voice on campus, empowering students to lead and educate over 100,000 of their peers each year in the face of intolerance and bigotry. We represent you when we reach over 100 million people on social media during peak weeks. We train leaders and lift communities by sponsoring speaking tours and holding conferences around the world. We are your hotline when rights are trampled on and emergency pro bono legal services are needed with over 150 attorneys standing by for students, faculty, and community members. We expand our community when we partner with over 750 different organizations around the world who care as you do about Israel. We work for the future when we use innovative teaching methods to educate middle schoolers and help them find their own connection to Israel. We represent you when it's time to share Israel's story. We represent you when it's time to push back, when it is time to teach, to tell the world about Israel, to stand up for what is right. And we have only just begun. Help us reach more people around the globe Help us empower more of our peers, your peers, to be brave, to be confident, to fight smart, to win, and to always, always stand tall. Okay. Okay. So... So that's a, that's a global int a view of what Stand With Us does. Um, and believe it or not, it all started in a living room. It started in 2001, right after uh, the, the murder of Kobe Mandel. Do you all remember Kobe Mandel? Kobe Mandel uh, and his family moved from Baltimore to Tekoa, which is part of the Gush Etzion block south of Jerusalem. And he uh, skipped school one day and went with his friend uh, for a walk in the desert. And he was stoned to death. 
by some Palestinian kids who were never caught. His parents started the Kobe Mandel Foundation. Um, and at the time when this happened in Los Angeles, um, two people who are the CEO um, and the COO of Stand With Us, Roz and Jerry Rothstein, were sort of astounded that um, the LA Jewish community wasn't, wasn't standing up. What are we doing? What's the response? Israel's under attack. Jews are under attack. What are we doing? So in their living room in May of 2001, they convened the Jewish leadership of LA and Stand With Us was born. Um, what, does, what does Stand With Us do? Well, basically, we are building an army of pro-Israel educators. You saw in the video that we are on five continents, um, offices all over, all over the world with a center in, in Jerusalem, uh, right across from the King David Hotel. Um, we partner with organizations like the Federation in South Jersey. And let me share with you here. There we go. Um, and in this region, it's the Mid-Atlantic. So we have the Northeast, we have the Southeast, we have the Midwest, we have the Northwest, and we have several, several offices in, in California. Um, but the, the Midwest is a, actually a very large region. It goes from Central Jersey South, Pennsylvania, Delaware, the, the District of Columbia, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, and at times, a little portion of Eastern Ohio. The video made clear, and as you may know, uh, we focus primarily on helping our children and grandchildren in high school and college deal with anti-Semitism, deal with anti-Israel actions. Um, somebody earlier was talking about um, what's going on as a result of the, the murder of George, George Floyd. Well, <laughs> this morning, there was a synagogue in, Israel, in, in LA that was vandalized out of this and it said, free Palestine, F Israel. This is ever present. And because of intersectionality, we often see anti-Semitism rearing its ugly head when there are other issues of, of race um, and violence uh, and other disruptions in the country. It's just the ugly, ugly animal that never ceases to go away. So we were dealing with kids because mostly it was on campus where kids were getting um, a, a attacked or feeling under siege and in high school as well. But we realized that, you know, high school may be too late. This is our region. High school may be too late. What we really need is to start when the kids are younger in middle school and thus the program LINK. LINK is an online experiential program with, it, it's mostly in day schools and in Hebrew schools. And it allows the children to um, form their own relationship with Israel based on their own value system. I mean, it's not good enough for us anymore to tell kids, you have to love Israel because it's the homeland for the Jewish people. Or you have to remember, Israel was nearly defeated in the Six Day War. They can't relate to that. What they see on the news nowadays reflects nothing of our experience. So they have to come to find their own relationship with Israel and they, and they do it now at an earlier and earlier age and LINK starts the process. Well, what does that look like? Well, a sample lesson might be something like this. You and I know that we talk about Israel's narrow waistline, that nine mile narrow waistline. Well, for us, that's relevant. We know what nine miles is. We get in the car, we drive nine miles, 10 miles, 20 miles. But what does that mean to a kid who's 12? They don't, you know, nine miles is not really relevant. So a sample lesson might look like something like this, where they go online and they find their home. This red dot happens to be the headquarters, the national headquarters of Stand With Us in LA on Wilshire Boulevard in the Federation building of uh, the Jewish Federation of Los Angeles. And they draw a diameter. What is nine miles from their home? And they can see what's in that nine miles. Oh, Cherry Hill Mall is in that nine miles? My best friends are in that my nine miles, the JCC, the camps at Medford, all of a sudden nine miles becomes a relevant number that they can relate to. And now when we talk about that esoteric narrow waistband of Israel, 
It's not so esoteric. The kids can relate to how close, how small nine miles is. There were so many other lessons about Israel itself and history and culture where the kids can adopt their own experiences and relate it to the Israel experience, and now Israel becomes part of themselves. So here in South Jersey, the LINK program was just introduced this year at Polis and at Kelman, and our good friend Elise Panich, you must all know Elise Panich, Elise and Ken Panich. Elise, as a volunteer, uh, wrote a grant and got funding for the program at these two schools, which is just wonderful. And of course, we invite other Hebrew schools in the area. So if you would like to make a connection to your synagogue, just give me a shout and let me know, make an introduction, and we'll be glad to set up a, a demonstration with the, with the founder and the developer of this program. It's a wonderful way to prime the children for when they go to high school. So we have a high school program that uh, works in schools throughout the country. The Mid-Atlantic region has two high school coordinators that report upstream to the um, National Director of High School Affairs. The reason we have two high school directors is because Southern New Jersey for high school and also for college is run out of New York. So Maria, who is the high school coordinator for South Jersey, also deals with high schools in New York and North Jersey and Long Island and Connecticut as well. And then the rest of Mid-Atlantic is, is run by our high school coordinator out of, out of Baltimore. So what is the high school department? It's a year long internship program for 11th graders and 12th graders. They interface monthly with the high school coordinator where they develop their own skills as educators, as advocates, they produce programs in their high school with either the Hillels or the Israel clubs, or they will gather in their parents' homes and, and, and talk to their parents' friends about Israel. It's a leadership uh, and professional development course, um, and it currently is in Cherry Hill East. Next year, it will be it's at Eastern in Southern New Jersey. Uh, it will also be in, in a Princeton Day School, which is part of our region. East Brunswick High School, which is just slightly north of our region, and at, um, at the um, Hillel um, Day School in Ocean Township. And then we have about seven schools in Philadelphia and the suburbs, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, um, Rockville, Maryland, and Virginia. So our high school coordinator meets with these kids on Google Hangouts. You all know what Google Hangouts is? It's like a, it's another Zoom sort of, um, um, interactive online presentation. Um, and here's an example of the effectiveness of how it works. So um, when I was at JCRC, I created a program with Arkady um, Hasidovich, who I'm so sure you all know the Shaliach. And we created a program called Ambassadors.il, Ambassadors IL. It's an 11th grade he, um, Israel education leadership program. And it runs throughout the year. And stand with us, is the content provider. So our high school coordinator, Maria, who has an incredible story of being a, uh, she grew up in Greece and was a pro-Palestinian activist until she started realizing that the arguments she was trying to share were fallacious and wrong. And she started studying more about Israel and then went to IDC to learn really who are these Jews anyway? and realized that the Palestinian narrative was not exactly true and honest, and she has become a pro-Israel educator. Amazing, working for Stan with us, and she's actually converting to Judaism. Imagine that, that trajectory. So she was teaching this class. Well, unfortunately, she was called back to Greece because of visa issues, and she couldn't make it back in time to teach the first session of the Ambassador's IL program, and there were 20 kids that were waiting for her instruction. But we were okay, because Rebecca Rausch, our high school intern at Cherry Hill East, picked up the mantle and taught the first lesson to the kids who were participating in the Ambassador's IL class. And she did an Israel 101 class that with the history of Israel 
and showing how Israel has always, the Jews have had a presence in Israel for 3,000 years. And this young woman did a remarkable job. And everybody in the room, with the adults in the room, were excelling. And her peers were learning because she was, they were learning from a peer. Peer-to-peer -peer education is invaluable. And that's one of the reasons that this is such an effective tool, because they're not learning from grandma like me, they're learning from their friend. And it takes on so much more credibility hearing the arguments coming from a friend of yours. So what happens if your school doesn't have a high school intern? It's a very selective process. And there isn't enough funding to have um, high school interns in all of the different schools. Well, you can become part of the Teen Leadership Council, which is open to kids, pro-Israel kids, Jewish, non-Jewish, throughout high school. You also are uh, lucky enough to get um, individual mentorships through these Google Hangouts. You also learn lessons. You also participate in projects in your high school and in the community. And um, it's a very good um, bonus. You get a little star next to your name if you then apply to become a high school intern the following year. What do these kids do? Um, they, can, they can join with um, the Israel clubs on campus, or they can invite in the high school coordinators to give lessons um, on a variety of different things that are either to the school or even to the community, even to a group like yours. What kind of lessons might they teach? Israel 101 is what I mentioned to you. Um, BDS movement, how critical is that? We, that is such an issue on college campuses, which we'll get to in, in just a moment. But what is anti-Semitism versus legitimate criticism of Israel? How do you distinguish that when you watch the news? Media bias against Israel, um, Israeli humanitarian aid. How many of our kids know? How many adults in the community know that oftentimes when there's a crisis around the world, the first international aid comes from Israel, even in countries that are sworn to Israel's destruction. So the high school campus and the high school um, coordinators are a really valuable set of educators in our community. So now we have primed um, a bunch of young, of young leaders who go on uh, to like our, like Miri Kornfeld, who is the National Director of, of uh, Campus Affairs, who was just honored by Jewish Week as being one of 36 under 36 outstanding Jewish leaders. This is the kind of, 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 of individual that this program can create. Obviously she's an adult now, but having gone through all of this thing, all of this training, uh, uh, she's primed now to share her knowledge and her experience and, and teach and create um, more future leaders and give them the confidence to advocate for Israel and to fight against anti-Semitism. But now the kids are going to go to college. This is a problem. College campuses, I don't have to tell you, are a hotbed of anti-Israel activity. So what do we do on campus? Another highly prestigious, another highly prestigious program called the Emerson Fellowship, which is funded by a very caring family out of Los Angeles. Another highly competitive year-long process that uh, work, recruits, trains, educates, and inspires pro-Israel students on campus. They form a network on their campus and they work with other pro-Israel organizations. What's interesting about our um, campus community here in Mid-Atlantic is that it's run by a, a, a Christian young man who's in his late 20s, who thinks, who loves Israel. Uh, it's part of who he is. And he works one-on-one -on -one with um, his Emerson Fellows on campus. In our area, we are at Drexel University, University of Delaware, um, University of Pennsylvania, um, George Mason University, this is the coming year, Muhlenberg College. Rutgers University is outside of ours. Princeton University, where we had an Emerson Fellow last year, is really sort of outside of our area for campus. Um, we have 15 Emerson Fellows in the, in the Mid-Atlantic region. Nearly half of all Emerson Fellows go on to become 
professionals in the Jewish world. So I told you at the beginning of the program that I work with APAC as a volunteer. So last September, um, I was asked if I would come down to Washington to work with the newest class of diamond interns at APAC and participate in mock solicitations where I was supposed to be the donor and I was assigned five um, diamond interns to solicit me. And I gave them a really hard time. They had to work for getting that gift from me. So they talked to me, you know, what do you do? Where, where are you from? What do you do? And I said, oh, well, I work with Stand With Us. The kid stops the interview, says, you see me and that kid over there? There were 20 kids in this room, so 10% of the room. We were both Emerson Fellows. So here's one organization that now has two APAC professionals that came through the Stand With Us program. So it's extraordinary, this leadership training. But how do they work on campus? Well, the most effective way is through our experiential Israel program that create Israel in a proactive way. Many of the organizations, including, um, including APAC on campus, including AJC on campus, really work in a more defensive way. When, when there's something that happens on campus, they have, they have identified leaders on campus, but they're there when an action happens that they need to respond to. Stand with us, don't join with those students like it did at my alma mater last Passover, University of Maryland, when the kids were all away. They worked to, to pass a pro-BDS resolution. The Emerson at the University of Maryland coordinated with APAC and other pro-Israel groups, crafted an argument um, and worked with the student government, made a case, and the vote was to defeat the BDS resolution. But that's a reactive. How can you be proactive? Well, you can be proactive with these Israel experiential programs that show kids who have no idea what Israel is, never heard of Israel, may have a negative opinion about Israel, shows them Israel in a different light. And I'd like to share a day with you called Lemonade Stand. It's a very hot day here in Riverside, so a lot of students want to get something cold and refreshing. It's also a midterm week, so they really do want to squeeze out a lot of the stress that they're feeling. So this was a really great opportunity for students here at UC Riverside to be able to do both. Hey, so hello, I'm on campus today, and what we're doing is we're giving away some lemonade. We've got this beautiful lemonade stand full of lots of goods, along with a lot of information. We're allowing students to go ahead and write any of the struggles that they have in their life, whether it's personal or whether it has to do with school. We've got these giant props that you can squeeze, literally it's symbolic of squeezing out any of the negativity in your life. A lot of students love the lemonade stand and that's the most amount of people I think we've gotten to come to one of our tables. We handed out lemonade to about 300 different students. Of all the pro-Israel events I've done on campus, this one it was the smoothest. We want to introduce people to who we are, find out what their needs are, and this was mostly about them today. Although, you know, we're talking about us, we talk about Israel, we talk about Judaism. This is so much about them and empowering them. To see all the people smiling and giggling and taking pictures with their friends, it's a really binding event with uh, our Hello and Stand With Us and the UC Riverside community. This gave an opportunity for students to really have their first approach to what, to what Stand With Us was. And they're the backbone of this event. They are the, the structure. The lemonade stand was perfect. I thought it was pretty incredible, the, uh, the step between photo wall. I mean, rarely on campus do you ever see something like that. It reminds you of a red carpet event. And I think that's the kind of feeling that Stand With Us was going with, and it worked. Um, it made a lot of students feel special. They wanted to take photos. Students came back with their friends to take a second photo, and this kind of thing wouldn't have happened without them. This is an amazing way to introduce people to hello to introduce people to stand with us because it's something that's really positive for them and something where they don't feel like they can't connect with an issue. Everybody has stress, everybody goes through troubles in their life, everybody has challenges and this is a great way for our campus to really bind together. The 
amazing thing about that, which they didn't really discuss, was that in order to get a can of lemonade, you had to engage in conversation. And the conversation was explaining how Israel has gone through diversity, war, challenges, um, taking a desert, making it bloom, taking their challenges, taking lemon and making lemonade. So it was a very non-threatening way to teach to non-Jewish students um, or non or kids, even Jewish students that don't know a lot about Israel, give them a little background and then make it relevant to them that, oh, they have challenges, I have challenges. Um, and a way to unite with other organizations, teach about how you can become engaged on campus. They are very, very effective. One of my favorites, by the way, is called Israel 420. Um, I had to ask my kids what 420 is. It's like National Get High Day, National Smoke a Joint Day. And they had an Israel 420 um, uh, EIP. So uh, naturally, college kids are going to go over to that. What does that mean? Well, they were able to engage in conversation and teach that Israel is the leading uh, R&D place for medical marijuana research. And students had no idea that Israel is participating on this level and helping uh, the world um, uh, with this innovative technology. One of my favorite stories, though, about what happened with a, with a, uh, a former Emerson at Michigan State University is that she came back to her apartment after have, having just hung her mezuzah on the door to find it ripped off. So she reached out to her university, to the apartment, and they was able to find using video who the, who the culprit was. And she was being encouraged to file a police report. And she said, no, I don't want to file a police report. I want to meet with the guy. So the police organized and the campus people organized a face-to-face -face meeting with Maddie, where she explained why this was offensive to her, why this scared her, why this was an anti-Semitic act. And she made him come with her. He agreed to go on the tour of the Holocaust Museum there. He was so moved after that, that he compensated her for the cost of the mezuzah. He was horrified to learn that his action actually created fear in other students who took down their mezuzot from their doors, lest they also be victims of this act of terrorism. This was a student engaging with another student and having a very direct impact. Okay, so how come I can't advance? Israel also has an office, uh, same with us has an office in Israel. That's across the street, as I told you before, from the King David Hotel. It receives over 30,000 visitors a year. But why do we have to have an office in Israel? Everybody in Israel knows about Israel. Well, what it does is it trains ambassadors. It trains El Af staff so that when they're on their planes, they too can advocate for Israel. Each year they have an ambassadors program where they train 180, 150 Israelis who become ambassadors to other countries who serve as members of the Knesset. They run Israel soldier tours to America. Stand With Us has brought soldiers to uh, the JCC in, uh, in Cherry Hill. They also run our social media department. Stand With Us posts every hour on the hour, 24 seven on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, you can see the beautiful videos and the posts that has more, uh, a, a larger social media following than any other pro-Israel organization. It also hosts our Stand With Us Connect. And if you go to standwithus.com slash connect, you can view a myriad of pro-Israel um, educational videos. Um, and we've had over 100,000 people tuning in just during the quarantine. Stand With Us also has a legal department. We offer pro bono, over 150 attorneys around the country offer their services to students, faculty, community members who have had some anti-Semitic or feel threatened on campus. They study the law, they study the local law, they study the university law, they study um, the um, government laws and are able to put forward a case um, should there be um, a, a case to be had and only if the student wants to move forward. We don't take a case on just because we think there's a worthy case. It has to be on behalf of the student. A new addition to the uh, Stand With Us Legal Department is the Center for Combating Anti-Semitism. What starts with the Jews never ends with the Jews. And we see that now at the top of the program, I told you about the 
uh, the vandalism at the synagogue in LA that's coming out of these riots. So this is, this is really true. What does this center do? This center, believe it or not, is also run by a non-Jew who feels very, who feels that the Jewish people are a part of who, who she is. Um, and um, after President Trump, after his uh, undersecretary of the Department of Education adopted the, um, the uh, a new ruling, a new a definition for what anti-Semitism is, Stand With Us, the Center for Combating Anti-Semitism, filed the first ever Title VI a case under the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on behalf of a student at UCLA who was, <laughs> pardon me, singled out by a visiting professor in a class, singled out for being Jewish. The university did not respond to the complaint, would not hire a professor to give um, alternative views. And uh, the Department of Education, it was the first ever case that it accepted under this new definition, and it is now investigating a civil rights um, violation at the University of California. We also just instituted, along with the Mizell Family Foundation, a rewards program to augment and enhance law enforcement, um, a reward of, of $2,500 and possibly more for any information that leads to the arrest and the conviction of a person committing um, an anti-Semitic act. That could be vandalism, that could be uh, anything verbal, um, and it is anything that's classified as a, as a hate crime. So I know we have military people here. We have people that have, you guys, you guys have a great relationship with law enforcement, especially with your law enforcement appreciation breakfast. These are, this is a wonderful tool to share with all of your contacts there because it's a real enhancer. Sometimes people, I don't have to tell you, they're very reluctant to come forward. Why do I have to get involved? Well, you know, it's important to be involved. And you guys know that because you guys stand up. It's important to be involved. And if this tool can help with that, we're, there, we're here to help uh, the police get the information that they need. And lastly, we don't stop at the campus's door. We have a place for all of you who have been to college to join on chapters with the alums for ca campus fairness. There are 40 chapters nationwide, including locally at Bryn Mawr College. Haverford College, Princeton, Temple University. We know that there has been a lot of problems at Temple University, especially with uh, Mark Lamont Hill. Um, Bucknell University, University of Maryland, UVA. This is where you gather together with other members of your uh, graduating classes, of your, of your uh, campus, to put pressure, to harness the unique power that you as alumni have, be it your voices, be it you know, withholding contributions, Speaking together as a group, it has been very effective as well um, in trying to make the administration aware of things that are happening on campus, that there's anti-Semitism coming out of different departments. Um, it's critical. But mostly, this is here for your children and your grandchildren. They don't, as I said to you, they don't relate to Israel the way we do. We have to find a way to empower them. And I need you to, to join with us in this effort. We can't do it unless we do it as a community. And thank you for sitting here with me. I don't even know how long I went on. I got very excited sharing all this, this exciting thing that this community does. And I'll be glad to, um, to take any kind of questions that you have now, or you can email me later. So thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. That was uh, great. Uh, it's always uh, good for us to hear about the organizations that support Israel. And I don't know how many people were even familiar with uh, Stand With Us. Um, questions for Paula? Uh, if you want to raise your hand, I'll recognize you. We'll try to do it in an organized fashion. Uh, looks like uh, Mr. Silver. You can unmute yourself. Uh, unmute. Ed Silver, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, Paul, okay. thank you for joining us. Um, how are you funded? Um, we're funded by private donation. We're a 501c3. We're known as, if you wanted to look us up, the Israel Emergency Alliance. Um, we have some wonderful major donors, mostly out in California. We have some serious donors actually in, in Philadelphia. 
um, but we're most we're, but we're funded by private donation. Thank you. Thank you. And get now. Yeah. Hi, uh, Paula. My uh, my grandson and granddaughter live in uh, Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, which is Montgomery County. Um, that is that a different is that that's obviously part of the Mid Atlantic, correct? Yes. Yes. So who would they contact? My grandson is in the, in the uh, tenth grade, and uh, so you can put you can put you can put them in touch with me. What high school does he go to? Uh, he goes to uh, Plymouth White Marsh uh, Town. Plymouth, Plymouth okay, Marsh, so there, White, White Marsh High School. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's there's no there's no high school intern there, but there might be a teen leadership council there. So okay. so um so Ed can give you my email address. Well, for everybody, you can all be in touch with me. It's Paula J at standwithus.com. Just, you know, shoot me an email and tell me that, you know, we met this morning. And I'll be able to answer any questions that you have or connect you or your grandchildren or your children with the appropriate people and see if there isn't a way that we can get your grandkids involved. Right. I have a granddaughter who's in middle school there in that colonial district. So does she go to, does she go to Hebrew school? I think she did. <laughs> she thinks she did, right? So, so the LINK program is appropriate for that age, for yeah. your granddaughter's age group, but that's administered through the Hebrew schools right. or day schools. Although, although because of, of, of the quarantine, we, have, we, we do have now a, a community access. Normally, you can only access it if you're an educator and a subscriber, but there is a way to go to Israel LINK, I-S-R-A-E-L-L-I-N-K dot org, You'll be able to explore that. And, I, and for those of you who have uh, middle school children, grandchildren, definitely go online with them. Do this with them. It's a great family um, fun tool. Great. Thank you. So for those of you who didn't catch that email address, it's Paula, P-A-U-L-A-J, one word, at oh. standwithus.com. And you can uh, send her an email. Um, if if you used to communicate with her at the Federation, be careful that that email address doesn't come up because I sent her the invite to the wrong address and she called me this morning and said, I never got invited to your meeting. <laughs> so, Paula J at standwithus.com. Uh, Lenny Berman. Hi, Paula. Um, Hi, Lenny. My question is, uh, there are people in uh, political areas who are part of the legislatures and what have you, who have exhibited anti-Semitic um, proclivities, shall we say. Is, does Stand With Us do anything to combat anti-Semitism in the publicly, publicly elected people? So a stand, that's a great question. Stand With I, Us is an apolitical organization. Oh, okay. Uh, it's apolitical, um, but APAC does that. APAC does it. I mean, I have, I have relationships with members of Congress, some of whom are as pro-Israel as you can be, and others I have to work with. So there are other organizations that do work with legislators. Now, that said, you're all constituents. You all have, should have relationships with your members of Congress. You all live within um, either Don Norcross or Andy Kim's um, area, and you should know these people. You should follow their votes. You should be sure that they're voting on behalf of things that are that advance the U.S.-Israel relationship. If there's a BDS bill that you see coming out that you think they should be on, you need to call their offices and tell them such. If there's something that comes out of the New Jersey State Legislature, Jimmy Beach, when he was Senator Jim Beach, when he, he was Senator, he was the one that authored the anti-BDS legislation in New Jersey. You should always call and thank these people. People get, you know, legislators get a lot of negative phone calls and negative emails. So the ones that are positive are really noticed. So that's incumbent upon all of us to do that. But as an organization, Stand With Us does not do that. Um, we work really with, uh, with the students. We empower that way. We're educators. Um, the other organizations deal in the public square. Thank you. Nelson. Nelson. Oh, Nelson. Paul, hey, Nelson. Stand With Us is a fantastic organization. You're a fantastic person, too. Thank you. But, 
But my question is, uh, are we losing the battle on the, co on the college campuses right now? Yeah. It, you hear stories about BDS being advocated by even the presidents and chancellors of the colleges. Yeah. Is that, what's your opinion? Are we losing? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm forever hopeful and positive because that's really the only way to be. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge. We have, we have work to do. And the more campuses that we can be on, um, the, the more effective we can be. And that takes, that takes funding, clearly. But we were one of the first organizations to reach out through our alumni network, the last slide that I show you, Alums for Ample Campus Fairness, to George Washington University, which you may know appointed a interim chancellor, interim director of the Elliott International School of Studies, a Jewish woman who has a record of pro-Palestinian yep. um, advocacy. Uh, we were one of the first ones to put a you know, dear, dear um, uh, chancellor letter out there, sent it around to all of the alumni to sign, um, led the way, and the school just came out and said that in their search for a permanent replacement, that Professor Feldman will not be considered as a permanent replacement. Good, good. So, yeah. So we have these positive things to point to, but it's, it's very, very scary. I mean, you know, the video of get off my campus, you know, Zionism must be, must be wiped out, um, the Israel apartheid walls, these are the things we have to battle. And the more educators that we can have and the more that we can show Israel in a positive light, um, the better off we'll be. But, you know, like anything, it takes resources. Anyone Thank else? You. Hands up if I'll recognize you if I see your hand. Wave at me, uh, Alan Finkelstein. 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 <laughs> that, that, that is the proper way to pronounce that. I know that. Yeah. Paul, my alma mater is the University of Michigan, and I understand that there is at least one professor on the campus who refuses to supply, I guess, sponsor students who want to travel to Israel. How does Stand With Us deal right. with that? Right. So that was, so that was a one-time issue when the student wanted to go to Israel and the, and the professor would not uh, write her a, um, a letter of recommendation. Yeah, it's, a, it's an issue. So that would be where the legal department would get it, become involved. They would scrutinize the, um, you know, what, is, what the government, what the, the, the campus bylaws say and see whether or not there's a violation there. We run up against the big problem and that is the umbrella of the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And academic freedom is covered under freedom of speech. In my opinion, this is Paula, not stand with us, it's gone too far because protected speech is not hate speech and you can't be hateful on campus and claim that it's my right. You can't get up in a math class and, and, and get up and say, you know, it, the idea for baby killers. You can't do that. Um, but then some, a professor might claim, well, I, I can do that because it's protected speech and, and, and I'm an academic and, and I'm covered under that. So there were a couple of ways. That would come out of the Midwest office, which is based in, in Chicago, and they have some council and people in Michigan. University of Michigan is a challenging case, especially given where it is. Um, you know, Michigan uh, is, has, I think, I think the largest Palestinian population in the United States. So they're, uh, they're getting input, you know, different, different input. Um, but it's, it's, it's challenged and we don't have the final say. We can't put a stop to it. It has to be you know, stopped at, by the administration. But we do let the administration know um, in very, very strong terms, like the example that I gave you with GW. Thanks, Paula. Anyone else? Uh, David Schwartz? David? I'm here. It's relevant to tell you, speaker, next month, is Dan Pollack, director yep. of ZOA, Zionist Organization of America, a perfect fit for these, these two months. And he will be discussing uh, anti-Semitism in Congress. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what he has to say. Not David, Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. I'm sorry, is, somebody, is somebody's hand up that I don't see? Uh, Don Weisenstein. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Paula, thank you for the presentation. If we wanted to, to donate, you know, and support, can you clarify the process or 
uh, an email or whatever we do? That's such a, that's an awesome question. Thank you, Don. It's very easy. <laughs> stand Standwithus.com slash donate. Thank you. Thank For you. those who didn't hear, standwithus.com slash donate. On the web, get your credit cards out. Anyone I, else? I, I, can I just follow up? Ed, can you hear me? Yeah, ba Barry, go ahead. Okay. Yes. I'd like to, I'd like to direct, direct my question to our speaker. I'm here. Okay. Your basic thrust was to explain how your organization um, lobbies for Israel, uh, you know, for Israel support, which is fine. But does it ever go the other way? And I guess I was meant by that is this. Israel has enjoyed since its inception, historically, uh, bipartisan support, bipartisan political support from whatever party was in, 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 a, in, in you know, in, whoever had a power in, Congress or with the, in, in the White House. Uh, people have pretty, pretty have been pretty much comfortable with that, except that as the I, I, Israeli premier has become more friendlier with the American president, it, it has apparently taken on a tone which many Americans are a little bit unhappy about, a little bit uncomfortable with. Do you ever have an opportunity to make the case that the Israelis have to be, the Israeli government has to be a little bit careful uh, in terms of some of the political stance it takes, particularly because it may threaten that bipartisan support, which Israel has always enjoyed? So thank you. Thank you very much for the question. So that's not my, that's not what Stand With Us does. Stand With Us is an education organization, not a lobbying organization. But because I'm on the National Council of APAC, uh, if you don't mind, I'll answer your question. Um, the United States, those of us that lobby on behalf of the U.S.-Israel relationship, uh, support the relationship between the United States and Israel. And we do not dictate what American policy should be or what Israeli policy should be. So it is, we do not dictate, American does not dictate to Israel its behavior or Israelis. We vote in the United States. We don't vote in Israel. We don't live in Israel. Um, and it is not, it is not for uh, lobbyists to dictate how uh, Israelis should behave in order to um, mollify a segment of the American, American Jews. But that's, but that's, um that's that's different than what stand with us does thank you uh, does that help does that help you i i think so i okay. I, I don't necessarily disagree with what, what you said but right. i guess sometimes i become concerned when i, I see see uh an, an israeli or an israeli israeli politician playing cozy with a, 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 a gentleman who was embarrassing the, the, the United States president. I, well, I want one so, of these. So, may I, so, allow, uh, so allow, allow me to suggest that you will, you're going to be speaking next month with Dan Pollock, a former Cherry Hiller, um, who, can to, who can discuss with you how ZOA works with Congress. But ZOA, I, I would also suggest that perhaps you invite um, somebody from APAC to address you, and you can and you can invite John Rich, who is the uh, South Jersey area director for APAC, and he can explain to you. And I'd be glad to get on on that call with you. Or I, there are other wonderful activists here who can explain to you how uh, b the bipartisan relationship between the United States and Israel works, and how working with co members of Congress is important. But I will say, in advance of what Dan's conversation will be, is that um, one of you on this call um, sent out information about how you can help fight anti-Semitism in Congress and that you can become engaged in the pro-Israel political movement by contributing to Anton Melton Mukes, 
who is a congressman from the Minnesota 5th District, who is running in the primary to challenge Representative Ilan Omar. Now, this is way outside my, my stand with us conversation. It is a pro-Israel political conversation, but it does speak to anti-Semitism, which we are fighting. But, and some of that does, as you all have said, stem perhaps from Congress. You have an opportunity to fight that now. You have an opportunity to support a man who, is, who speaks biblical Hebrew, an African-American man who speaks and reads biblical Hebrew, who has, who has had a job as a counselor in the Jewish home of New York, a man who understands our community, a man who supports Israel against somebody who clearly doesn't. And I'll leave that conversation for perhaps when I get off the line. And those of you that are involved in this, um, who know more about it, can discuss that with among you. But um, there is a way to become engaged. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Paula. Um, we'll take one more question if there are any more. Hands up, anybody? Uh, Larry? Go ahead. Let me unmute. Hi, hi Paula. Uh, hi, Larry. So the question is, in, in, in light of the pandemic and the restrictions and social distancing, some of the things that you showed us that Stand With Us does, like the lemonade uh, stand in California, you can't do. Right. So I'm curious, uh, uh, are you guys waiting for nope. uh, normalcy and, and, go about, uh, and go back to what you were doing? Or are you revamping your approaches to become more uh, uh, oriented towards stuff like this? And if so, how do you do it? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question because anti-Semitism is the virus that never dies. So we can't wait until we have campus back normal where we can set up these things or we would go to, go to a high school and get a bunch of kids together in a room. So we have been meeting like this over Zoom and in our area alone, we've reached over 5,000 students since the pandemic has started, since we've been in quarantine. So we are not letting up, we are completely shifting. And because we are a social media driven organization, as I said, we have more, more following than any other pro-Israel organization. We have capitalized on that and are working with the students. Our coordinators are doing more one-on-one -on -one mentoring. We're having more group things. It is continuing unabated. We don't have, we don't have a choice because the anti-Semitism is not stopping. Thank you, Paula. Thanks again for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's great remember, to be with you again. Thank remember, you. guys, pull out your credit cards and uh, help Paula along in her endeavors. Um, I, I want to stay on for a few minutes with you. Whoever would like to leave, uh, please okay. go ahead. It's, well, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm going to say so long and thank you. And, and next year, if you'd like to have one of us back, maybe one of our educators, and, you, and he can give you a lesson and show you the kinds of things that he's sharing with the high school students, um, I, I, would, I would love to do that. But keep up the good work that you guys do because I've seen it with my own eyes and you're an integral part of this community and I appreciate everything that you do. So thank you guys. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, Paula. Thanks bye again. Bye-bye. Uh, well. Bye-bye. Hi, Paula. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to take a minute. Um, you've probably all seen um, the results of our, uh, our efforts for contributions for the COVID-19 Emergency Response Fund. Um, we sent out an email, the, the total of, uh, by our members and by the club was over $16,000. Um, if you've seen the uh, published results by category, by monetary category, um, we were originally listed in the um, uh, 1000 to 4999 category. I have uh, asked the, uh, the Federation to take a look at that and make sure that our um, two $2,500 contributions uh, were tallied together and that were listed in the final tally as a 5,000 or more contribution. Um, and for those of you who contributed, I thank you. For those of you who haven't, um, there's still time. Um, the uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, collection is still open. Um, other than that, um, does anybody, uh, does anybody uh, can, get, go ahead. Can you just tell us uh, again, 
there might be some who want to contribute, but where the money goes for that fund, but what is it specifically used for? Well, most of it, I think, is, as far as I know, is being channeled to um, the, the uh, seniors, uh, food needs, um, whatever, whatever programs uh, that they have. Uh, I, I can't tell you all the detail, but they said it would all be used for that and not just for general purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else knows. Uh, yeah, I, I know a little bit about it, uh, Ed. Um, Go ahead, Larry. Uh, through a lot of it's going uh, uh, through JCFS uh, for uh, uh, food needs for, for seniors who obviously can't get out. Um, not zero for administration. They, they've made that real clear. Um, yeah, I think most of it is, is, is for food. There, there, there are some other uh, uh, spending on things that are not food related, but it is, uh, has to do, I think maybe like getting people around to uh, things they need to do in the pandemic, but it's, it's, uh, uh, that that's where the money's going. It's uh, it, it's been a huge uh, success in terms of uh, uh, the amount raised, and of course these people uh, 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 may have lost jobs. So actually, I say that one 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 addendum to what you said. I think it's more than seniors. It's 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 anybody. They don't have to be sixty five plus. It, it, it just people that that are uh, needing. Uh, basic services, primarily food. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you don't have to be 65. The food bank has had an unprecedented uh, demand. I, I forget what I, I had heard some statistics. I think they were getting a hundred calls a week Ooh. prior to this, and now they're getting like 300. Whoa. Yeah. Um, it, the demand for food is 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 just. You know, it's hard to believe that there are so many people in this area who are needy for food. Um, and obviously, for those of us who are at home, and even though we're confined, we're, we're comfortable, we have plenty to eat, um, it's incumbent upon us to help. Um, anyone else? Nelson, do you want to take a minute? I know I said something earlier about um, the... Um, American uh, Jewish Military Museum programs that are going to be included in an email. Do you want to take a minute and tell us about uh, the one on the 18th of June that you uh, mentioned to me? Sure. But first of all, I wanted to compliment Ed Stein. Uh, he's a member of the uh, four person team that put together Memorial Day Friday services. Uh, it's, a, it's a ceremony. It's a definition of Memorial Day would happen, reading the names of the people from our community that passed away since last year, they're veterans. And Ed turned out to be the technical expert. Yeah, believe it or not, Randy. <laughs> That's not funny, uh, Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did. The way he did it, he's called his son, and his son solved the problems. <laughs> right, exactly. That's the, way we, <laughs> that's the way we all do it. Okay, but concerning uh, the Jewish war Veterans Museum in Washington, D.C. They're putting on two events. One has to do with the history of the Jews in the military. And the second one that Ed's talking about is going to be on the 18th, and I recommend you listen to that. And what they'll be talking about is how the, uh, the Jews and non-Jews in this area, and particularly Jews, actually transported weapons that they, yeah, they stole, like Ed said, from the National Guard for the most part, from this area and from the middle part of the state up to Bayonne, New Jersey, put them on ships, and got them to Israel in 1947, 1948. There's uh, some people that uh, recently passed away, some from the COVID-19 virus, that actually were driving the trucks when they were 14 years old, 15 years old, illegally up the turnpike. Uh. And I hope the, the BOAC, the guy that's going to be give, giving the presentation, actually mentions their names. You'll probably recognize them. I know, Mike, you'll recognize uh, Erwin Jerichoff's name. Mike and myself met him a little while ago, fantastic person. Uh, just the stories he could tell about being afraid of being caught, driving those trucks up there, going to jail. He never was caught, but others have been. Again, exciting, talking about the beginning of the state of Israel. And it also indicates what we should be doing now as a community to support Israel. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Ed. 
Thanks, Nelson. Mike uh, Perloff, I think you wanted to say something. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Muted. That that's better. Now I see your lips moving. But I know I did that on purpose. Oh, uh, you're trying to you're trying <laughs> to play with us, huh, Mike? That is so good. That yeah, was a couple, great. Th couple things. Uh, Marty no and bagel I. bagel for you next week. <laughs> or next month. Uh, several oh, of our guys are, are still volunteering with Jewish Family Service and delivering food. And I want to publicly uh, acknowledge uh, the two that I know are um, Nelson and Ed. And uh, well done, fellas. Is there anybody else doing that that you know of? I do not. David Schwarz, I think. He's raising David? his hand. He's still uh, active. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. That's, if we want to do great. that, if any of the rest of us would like to volunteer to deliver food, um what what are you fellows doing to um take care of fears of contamination well i it, i mean it, there's really it, it's almost touchless um we are we get an email every friday i believe it is thursday or friday and it uh, gives us the person that we're delivering to or persons um we pull up at the saltzman house um, and let them know we're there or they recognize us now after a few weeks. And uh, they come out with a bag of food. They're wearing gloves and masks. I put on my mask in the car. They put it in the car for me wherever I want in my hatch or in my back door. Um, I drive to wherever I'm going. I call the person, tell them I'm arriving. Um, in depending on you know where we're delivering to we leave I, at one per place i leave it on the front porch and let them know i did um in another place i ring their doorbell drop it move back six eight ten feet and wait for them to come out and take it so it really is pretty much touchless and i i, I don't feel i'm exposing myself or i wouldn't be doing it um we pretty much stayed in the house my wife and i and uh um, I, I feel that the, the risk is, is very minimal and obviously, you know, you can bring your sanitizer with you if you're touching the handles of the bag with the food in it. If you want to sanitize, uh, you can do that. I think, David, do you feel the same way that I do about it, um, Nelson? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I don't yeah, think we're yeah. putting ourselves in. Not a problem. Yeah, I feel safe. Yeah. yeah. David, I wanted to thank you. Um, you managed to come up with these speakers for us every month without fail. Um, I don't know who else can do the job. If uh, if there's someone else who thinks they can do the job, I'm sure David would, would love an assistant. David, would you like an assistant? <laughs> or, or if, look, if you have a suggestion for someone who would like to speak to the group who you think would be interesting, Give David a call and let him know so that uh, he can take that into account. Um, other than well, that, absolutely. I, I'd, like to thank, I'd like to thank Mike Perloff for uh, securing Dan Pollock for us for next month. For next month. He's a very so, good speaker. So hey, next yeah. month, uh, I, whatever, whatever that date is, I guess it's June 28th. Um, you know, the emails will go out a couple weeks in advance and let you know again. Um, for those of you who were late today, I'll just uh, I'll just show you what you missed. Um, this and is, I just have a quick quick question uh, that might have general interest. Uh, I, I lost it. Uh oh, I lost. It. Oh, I, I'm sorry. This this quick lost, screen share. Oh, so my I lost question, my screen I, share. I've got a bunch of uh, 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 eyeglasses I found, and normally when we have in-person meetings, uh, there's a place to give them uh in this uh distance era we're now in um is there a place i could deliver them to richie uh, richie you, you, have mean, to unmute yourself. Yeah. you can always stop by my office just the office is open but it's locked so you have to call at the curb and we can pick them up where's your office and um in the shopping center where um uh raymore and flanagan is on in malton Route 73. Route 73. Uh, can you email me the address? Sure. Who am I talking to? Larry Bernstein. Sure. Larry, Larry, it's Route 73. It's called Bright Eyes, B-R-I-T-E-E-Y-E-S. Um, I know it's on the web. 
Um, but okay. uh, I'll give if um, well, Richie has your email address. He'll email you the exact address. Yeah. That's good. Um, Thanks, Lee. Go yeah. ahead, Lee. So uh, my office is open uh, four mornings a week, uh, usually from nine till about one or two on Route 70. Uh, we have a Lions Club uh, drop box for old eyeglasses. Okay, and where are you? Tell us your address. 1415 Route 70 East, um, the Cherry Hill Plaza building. That's kind of always open. And um, there's an outside lobby. Um, where Cherry, Hill Plaza. Have Cherry Hill Plaza, is that the one across, said two nine, right by 295? Yeah, uh-huh, Route 70. Okay. So the, the front lobby's always open. You can drop a bag with glasses marked for Dr. Yasger's, you know, Lions Club glasses. Or if you want to come by and just deliver them to the front, just bring wear a mask into the building and use the hand sanitizer when you enter our, our door. Okay, so we but have two alternatives. Have to, you two would have to, it would be, safest even if you called ahead from the parking lot that you want to bring them up and the i'll spout out the office number but you can look it up on the web also okay um, and what's the name of your uh, practice yes girl I oh, yeah, right, okay y-a-s-g-u-r yeah but, like, but the like most convenient time. thing is that the the uh, front lobby doors are always open so okay. you can leave a bag with the glasses with a you know instructions you know for that they're for me yeah I, I, right yeah. there yeah, i think that's what day I'm or gonna night. Do. okay and you can just call us uh or email me that you're dropping something off and in the office if you wanted to call the office it's only open for mornings okay all right anyone else mike Thank again you. Yeah, Mike, again, a couple things. One thing is it's, it was nice today to see so many people wearing the blue shirts, including board members for a change. <laughs> and the other thing is that uh, if people want to ask questions and we have more than one screen, if you take your cursor and go to the bottom where it says participants, why don't you take a look at it and you'll see what I mean. If you go to the bottom to participants and click on it, there's a small thing at the bottom where you can click on raise your hand. And if you do that, I believe Ed would be able to see it, whoever's host. Okay, and lastly, um, related to the previous conversation, if people have cell phones that, that they wanna get rid of, uh, it turns out the Cherry Hill Police Department is, um, has a, a box for those. There's some large charity that they deal with or if you don't want to go there, if you give them to me, uh, I have to go there once in a while for different things. I'll take care of that also. Mike, do me a favor. Um, raise your hand electronically for me. It, it worked on the first meeting and I haven't seen it since. Yeah, I, I clicked on it. It works, you can see it on my hand. I don't see it on yours. Who, has someone else Is clicked on it? Oh, yeah, I see it, I see it on, uh, on yeah, I uh, did. And uh, Melvin screen, yes. Right. For some reason, I don't see it on yours, Mike. Oh, all right, now I see it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, You're I, welcome. we had it. We had that on the first one, and I don't know. I guess it it took you to remind everybody again that you oh, can do that. that. Anybody else? Um, uh, Abe Furtis. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking about what happened to the contributions to the uh, to the uh, call a uh, nineteen fund. Uh, they sent a uh, the federation sent a report last week, in detailing all this stuff. I'll give it to you where you can send it. But basically, they collected four hundred and sixty-five thousand uh, dollars, and they have already issued eighty thousand dollars for Shoprite gift cards, uh, fifty thousand dollars for uh, one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars for for food. And then they got a fifty fifty thousand dollar grant from the United Way, and they still have two hundred thousand more. But everything has gone to food for people who need it. So I'll, I'll send you that report, Ed, and you can send it to the uh, to the club. Thanks, Abe. That's that's. But they great. already spent. They already spent uh, 
more than half of the money they collected for food. And the idea is that they are giving uh, people uh, gift cards for shoppers so they can go and shop by themselves if they, if they can, or not send the money, you know, distribute the food like you, you said before. Right. Um, also, I believe, and I, I don't know if it's appeared on the uh, JCC or JFCS website or the emails that they've been sending out, I believe this Friday there's going to be a drive-through um, food drop at the uh, Route 70 um, food bank, from what I understand. At least that's what I heard about a week ago. I haven't seen anything on it. Has anybody seen uh, advertisement on that? Yes. They had one at the end of one that... May, I mean, at the beginning of May, and they're having another one, I believe, this Friday. So you can, you drive through, you know, bring a couple bags of food and they'll, they'll take them out of your car or you can drop them. And, um, you know, they, they just have an unprecedented need for food. Anyone else? Any uh, hands up? I see uh, Ed Melman. A couple of things. Number one, uh, I have several bags of food that uh, we've been looking to donate. We were hoping that the JCC would reopen, but uh, it doesn't. I have no idea when or if that's going to be. And it's, uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to the Route 70 Food Bank because my office is now open. So, uh, are there? Uh, are you familiar with other avenues for uh, dropping things off either at the JCC or other places? Why, um, why don't you? Uh, well, I have your email address. Um, and I, and I probably have your home address. I, I'll contact you. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let you know if, if where you might be able to drop it, or maybe you know maybe I can stop and pick it up. Something. Or I like can that. drop it off at your place. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Okay. Me, the other uh, thing you know is what? Let me. Maybe I can save you both some time, Ed. Since we're basically around the corner from me, I'll give you a call when we're going to drop our stuff off and just pick it up. Great. Or you can drop it at my house. Mike, I also have cell phones available. Uh, I have probably uh, three or four uh, cell phones. So uh, if you are uh, going to be going to the uh, the police, we can uh, drop those off. Yeah, take care. Kill two birds with one stone. Sure. sure. And if anybody has uh, eyeglasses, uh, eyeglasses to drop off for donation, uh, you know my office is also available for that. Uh, I'm in Voorhees, so if, uh, if that's more convenient for people, uh, we obviously have a lot of eye doctors in this uh, in this organization. <laughs> We can see that. Ah, <laughs> uh, beat you Anyone to it. else, uh, Dick? Uh, Kurt, uh, uh, you had sent me an email about investment club. Maybe you want to mention again when, uh, when what date you're suggesting for that meeting? Hi, uh, I sent out an email about an hour ago. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah we. Can I sent out an email about an hour ago. Uh, suggesting that we have a meeting Wednesday night by Zoom if there's enough interest. Uh, I haven't gone, I sent it from my office account. I haven't gone back to see if there were any replies. I reply. If, if you need any, or, is are it you this okay Wednesday? Setting this up Zoom Wednesday? art? If not, I can do it. No, it's not a problem. Okay, let me know if you need anything. Anybody else? Uh, looks like Marty, are you, are you waving at me, Marty? Yes, I just wanted to say, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, Mr. Uh, Dave Singer is on this uh, presentation, so everybody should say hi to him. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hope everything's Dave. going well. Dave. I don't see him. Where is he? There he is. Yep. I see him. He's at the end, at least on wow. my screen. Hi, David. There he is. Say, gonna I'm going to unmute you, Dave, or I'm yeah. going to ask you to unmute if you can. Yeah, I did. All right, there he, there is. he is. I wanted to have a background of the ocean and the, and the beach, but uh, my reception wasn't good out there, so I had to go back in the living room. Okay, the, shore, well, the shore is beautiful. He's I'm at the glad shore. you could uh, join us. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Uh, well, hold on. Um, I, I saw I saw a hand waving. Um, it's Bert Schaefer. Wait a minute, Bert. Hold on. I, you've got to unmute yourself. I can't do it. Where is he? You're you're good. I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear you. <laughs> I'm I I. You're you're unmuted, but I I think you've got to turn the sound up on your computer. I don't think it's turned up. 
I don't think I can do anything from this end. Can you hear me? Wave your hand if you can hear me. Yeah, I can't hear you though. We can't hear you, I don't believe. Now, you're, you've, got to, you've got to turn the sound up on your computer. Maybe down at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a uh, microphone, a uh, speaker. Now, I'll see you, Bert. <laughs> now, if we could read lips, we would be okay, but I don't think we can, uh, I don't think we're too good at that. At least I'm not. Next time, Bert, you need, you need a grandchild or someone to help you. <laughs> That's what I do when I have a problem. Call the kids. All right. Nice Ed, to see you. Anybody else? Ed, I have. Go ahead. Whoever's talking. Don? Yeah. Uh, guys, I know it might, might seem real far away, but at some point the NFL season will resume. And uh, <laughs> I still contemplate having our league one way or the other, and I'll be sending out a survey. But if anybody is interested in – owning a team or being a part owner of an existing team, uh, please let me know. All right. We're looking forward to it. It'll be a great activity. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, Don, uh, Mel Chilowich is moving to Florida. And um, I guess he could stay as a member if he's interested, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. As, as long as he has, as 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 he has an email, he could be 100% Involved. Yeah, without him, I was a pretty awful player. <laughs> Still didn't do too well. <laughs> but it was fun anyway. We can have a virtual draft. I hear somebody talking, but I don't know who it is. <clears throat> How are you? Yeah. All right, guys. I will call it a day. Have a great day. Make every day Thanks, a good day. Good job. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. I think we, I think we had, uh, we had about forty-seven members uh, at the uh, at the beginning. Not bad. All right. Good job. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, bye.